Just about set to go before the sellout at Spartan Stadium. Let's welcome the third member of our crew, Dave Ryan. All right, Dave, thanks very much. Nick Saban, your young team, a lot of confidence needed to get Bill at this point of the year. Still seven games left to go. What would a victory mean today for them? Well, I think it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to win a Big Ten game. I challenge the players when we come off the field today, we're either going to play to our skill level above it or below it. So I challenge the pl players to competitive greatness, which means they'll play their best today, which will be above their skill level, which that's what we'll need to do to win. Nick, your team has been devastated by injuries. Seven stars at one time or another have gone down. How do you overcome that today? Well, I think you got to do it with a lot of character and perseverance, and that's what we're trying to do with our players Nick thanks thank you guys back upstairs all right Dave the Spartans have won the toss and elected to receive the kick by Indiana's Andy Payne and the deep receivers for the Spartans on the left is Herb Haygood on the right is a speedy freshman from here in Lansing Sean Foster who had a breakout game Last week, seven carries over 100 yards. He gives them a needed element of speed. And a good deep kick by Payne. Sending Herb Haygood back for the touchback. And Michigan State coming off by far its best offensive showing of the year. The Outback Steakhouse starting lineup offensively for the Spartans. Cedric Irvin not having the numbers he's accustomed to, but they feel at uh, Indiana, at least, he may be the best all-around back they will face this year. Burr coming off his best game at quarterback. Gould, the fullback. Plaxico Burris, 25 catches, leads the Spartans. Five of those have been for touchdowns. He's with Scott at the other wideout. Baker, the tight end. Jason Strayhorn, a tower of stability in the middle of an injury-ravaged Michigan State offensive line. And the first carry of the day for Cedric Irvin for about three yards off left tackle. The Indiana defense headlined by Adewale Agunlia, who has tied Van Waiters now for first all-time in career tackles for a loss. Gregory Zapp and Williams joining Agunlia up front. Jabbar Robinson is fifth nationally in interceptions with three, fifth in the Big Ten, 43 tackles with Brown and Gesina at the linebackers. O.J. Spencer starts for the injured freshman Maurice Tucker, who is out maybe up to a month with a dislocated elbow. He is their fastest player on either offense or defense, and they figure to miss Maurice. Burke to the air. Brewers juggles and drops. Bill Burke, Bill, coming off 17 of 21. They really felt like those numbers against Central Michigan represented a breakthrough for him last week. Well, the very gifted offensive coordinator, Gary Tranquil, told us yesterday, and Gary's been developing quarterbacks a long time, and he said, I'm really happy because Burke's accuracy is improving. Plaxico Burris is going to have to catch the ball for him when the ball's thrown right between the middle of the four and the bottom of it. Shotgun on third and seven for Burke. Well protected. And fires for LaVale Richardson, who makes a diving catch at the 33, and that's good enough for the first down. First down on the pass, Michigan State. The Indiana coaches felt that when Burke is on the move, as he was here, that he tends to look far down the field and ignore short-range receivers. In this case, he did not do that. He made a good decision and kept the drive alive. Gary Scott goes in motion. Both wideouts right side. Flag is down as Urban tries to get the corner turned unsuccessfully. But a little second effort will get him to the 42 pending the indication. And the officiating crew today is headed by referee Steve Newman. Yeah, and while they're conferring, John, here, here you go. Illegal procedure, Michigan State. Got a procedure problem. The very kind of thing that absolutely destroyed Michigan State in the Michigan game. They had seven procedure or delay type penalties in the third quarter alone. And specifically, they say illegal formation this time. What that means is there were not seven men on the line of scrimmage. You can have as many as you want up there, but you've got to have at least seven. That means a receiver or a lineman lined up too deep in the backfield so they didn't qualify as being on the line of scrimmage. And those are drive killers. Now first and 15. And they go with three wideouts. And Scott again in motion. 
And the give again right side for Irvin. Maybe one this time. First contact by the strong side linebacker for the Hoosiers 58, Brad Gasina. Cedric Irvin last year against the Hoosiers, one of the best games of his career, 178 yards and 306 all-purpose yards with three touchdowns at Bloomington. Yeah, and that, that led Cam Cameron and his defensive coordinator, John Haycock, to make the observation, this is the best artificial turf back in America. Cedric might not want to hear that, but he's a little different player when he's playing on the artificial surface. Burke has yet to be pressured. Burris hangs on to this one. And Plaxico Burris weaving toward the marker and depending on where they put him out of bounds, he is very close to the first down. Big One of the things target. I noticed, yes, a big target indeed, David. One of the things I noticed in the Michigan game, which of course is the biggest game of the year for these guys, is that Plaxico Burris, unlike a lot of young receivers, you can see where he is right now, he took the ball straight up the field, which is exactly what you want. This is not what you want. This time he takes it across the field and could have given away lot yardage. Got 14 and did get the first of the 44. Burke. This time for Gary Scott in a seam and Light Burris finds room to the right side. Scott with a cutback to the 33 of Indiana. First pass complete. 23 yards for the Spartans' second leading receiver, his 16th catch of the year. The somewhat lesser known brother in the Randall L family is Curtis, number 10, a cornerback, a fine player. Missed a tackle that time on the elusive Gary Scott, who also took the ball across the field. And there is a place for that, and especially in the veteran's mind, that time it worked. He had a lot better success with it than did Plaxico Burris, the previous completion. So from the 32, Irvin tries the middle this time and maybe a couple. Cedric Irvin, six-footer, 225 pounds, can block and catch passes. He lacks anything. It might be strictly straight-ahead speed, but you couldn't tell the Hoosiers that last year. No, he certainly looks fast in all of this. I'm not sure I've seen him look the way he did in this game. Here's a punt return where he outruns everybody for the touchdown. Work off a play fake to Irvin. Going deep, and I'm not sure who he thought he had in the back of the end zone, but only Curtis Randall L had a chance to get to that one. Herb Haygood, the nearest Spartan receiver. I'll tell you who was wide open, though, was his tight end, Chris Baker. Randall L has had a tough time. Last week, he slipped and fell on a very critical play in which the Wisconsin receiver also slipped and fell and caught the ball in his stomach. In this case, he's got a chance to stop this drive, give his offense the ball at the 20-yard line, but can't come up with the catch. Ninth play of this opening drive for Michigan State. They need eight. And finally, some pressure, a one-handed attempt by Irvin, and incomplete. And a promising drive now comes to a fourth and eight crossroads. The pressure was provided by a safety blitz. Justin Smith, number 27, came off the outside. Justin's dad's a judge, and he couldn't understand why his son wasn't being recruited, so he took an expert to look at him his junior year, and the guy said he can play. Obviously, the Indiana coaches agreed, and it's paid off for the Hoosiers. So on comes Paul Edinger to try what would be his longest of the year. This will be 47 yards with very little, if any, angle. And he has enough leg and drops it right over the crossbar for a 3-0 Spartan lead. 75th year of Spartan Stadium, where Michigan State wins about 70% of its games. They have an early 3-0 lead after the 47-yard Paul Edinger field goal. He kicks deep to Darren Graham and Frankie Franklin, and this will be Graham from the seventh. Met by the special team star, Eric Morris, of the Spartans after a 13-yard return. Randall L for Indiana with Marcus Floyd coming off two very solid performances at running back and Chris Gall, a good pass catcher at fullback. 
receiving crew again features Levron Williams, who has missed quite a bit of time with an ankle and knee combination injury. He's back today with Browning and Mincer. And up front, Matt Snyder has been, so far, the offensive line leader, the most consistent they've had up front. 6'3", 280-pound junior from Heartland, Wisconsin. Boucher's out of the eye from the 20. Randall L. right to the air. And the first catch of the day is going to be very close to a first down, and they don't waste much time getting Lebron Williams back into the swing. The defense for the Spartans, Robert Smith, all week listed as questionable with an ankle problem, but he's going to try and give it a go today with Saylor, Newkirk, and Thomas. The linebackers now feature freshman Josh Thornhill for the injured Mike Austin in the middle. He's out indefinitely chipped a bone in his left ankle in practice on Wednesday. And in the secondary, they've really had to scramble things. Lamar Marshall moves from corner to free safety with Sori Canoe, their leading tackler, out with a strained left knee. Chris Gall with a carry. And he is driven down by Lamar Marshall at the 36-yard line. Lamar Marshall, 29. Well, you look at what Michigan State's preseason defense looked like and what Randall L is facing today bears really very little resemblance to the group that Nick Saban has out there today. Yeah, I think one of the big keys to this game, perhaps the most important, is the play of the back seven, the remade patchwork secondary, and whether or not Randall L and the Indiana offense is mature enough to take advantage of these people that haven't played in the positions they're in. Early movement that time by a couple of Hoosiers, including right tackle Craig Robin. Both starts on the offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. All starting in. Randall L on a roll. And up top, and a little too tall for Tyrone Browning, the Hoosiers' leading receiver. Eric Morris had the coverage. Michigan State, one of the strongest defenses in the nation last year. They figured to be somewhere in that general range this year. Bill, they're not even close. No, and Nick Saban, who is a defensive guru, has seen this, obviously. The drop-off is so startling, and even with the injuries, that shouldn't have happened. So he has involved himself on a day-to-day -day basis in coaching the defense. We saw that at Thursday's practice. Very active. Randall L with three wides on third down will keep and will be driven out of bounds about three yards shy of the first down, just short of the 40. Eric Morris there to chase him in front of the Spartan bench. And the Hoosiers will have to kick. Phase one of Randall L is his assignment. In this case, he's on the corner. He's looking for the route that he's supposed to throw to. Nice cut block right there by his fullback, Chris Gall, who makes a habit of that. And then phase two kicks in when he begins to run. And he's every bit as dangerous doing that as he is throwing. Some very shaky snaps on punts last week by uh, Indiana. Drew Hagan gets a bit of a roll on what was a shaky kick. And he will get 40 yards with no chance for Gary Scott to return this one. 10.05 in the first 3 0 Spartans. Mike Austin, normally the middle linebacker, right there on the crutches on the left for the Spartans who have a 3 nothing lead. They take over just across their 20. And Lloyd Clemens giving Cedric Irvin an early breather tailback. Dual the fullback in the offset eye behind Bill Burke. Clemens with some room left corner. Driven out by O.J. Spencer. Clemens, a senior from Detroit, with his first carry. Now, this is how the offensive line looked for their opener late August against Colorado State. Sakura, Jensen, Strayhorn, Mason, Bonito. Mason now out for the year with a knee. Various other ailments have claimed uh, some folks, and so they're starting Harker at left guard. Jensen for Mason at right guard, and junior college transfer, Greg Robinson Randall at right tackle. Clemens over the middle for the first down. 
Now what does that do to your offensive continuity to be constantly moving in not only new faces but almost completely inexperienced faces up there. Well it's exactly like trying to choreograph a dance and having a different dancer every night when you go on the stage or two or three different ones you, you don't get used to each other the offensive line cohesiveness is critical everybody needs to know where the left foot is going the right foot's going uh, i was one of them we're used to that sort of choreography and you can't do it when you're always changing Burke, short drop and chase for the first time by ogunlia almost got him Burke will have to keep and may lose one Probably won't be the last time that Wally gives chase. Yeah, Adewale Agunlia, the name means Iron God, and he plays godlike. I mean, he plays his heart out. It is fun to watch number 93 for Indiana. He is a great effort defensive lineman, and he will be back in the backfield. Has tied Van Waiters for a career. Stops behind the line of scrimmage and two and a half sacks away from tying Van Waiters in that category as well. That did lose one for Burke. Throwing on second and 11 for Gary Scott. Batted away. Almost interceptable that time for O.J. Spencer, who has two picks already this year. The job of a defensive back in zone coverage is to read the quarterback's eyes, move in accord with where he thinks the ball is going to go. O.J. Spencer, superb athletic ability, used the right hand, did not wrap up the receiver with the left hand, which normally results in an interference call, and made a nice play for his team. He is their third leading tackler. Much of the year backing up the now injured Maurice Tucker. Sophomore Jacksonville, Florida product. And we've got the clock stopped at 9.05 to go. Steve Newman over there behind the Michigan State bench to check something. Well, it was the clock, and it's down to 9.20, which is apparently where it should be. Newman apparently satisfied. And reminding everybody it's third down now they need 11 and Cedric Irvin is checked back into the backfield. Yeah in the down marker. Uh, well they just corrected it now says third down. I guess they can't officially change it until the clock is right. Ever occurred to you why these educational institutions can't get clocks to work <laughs> properly. Four wide out shovel pass fooling. Nobody, least of all, Wally Agunlia, who immediately wraps up Cedric Irvin. This is a play that Cedric runs extremely well. It's sort of an inverted option play. Agunlia obviously had been schooled on it. He comes off the ball, does not just take off up the field on a rampage, but plays his position well and comes up with the key stop to make the punt happen. Greg Jarrett is second nationally. He's a freshman averaging almost 48 yards a boot out of Martinsville, Indiana. And a fair catch by Darren Graham. Hoosiers from the 21 yard line. And up the middle, a fumble by Marcus Floyd, which the Spartans have recovered at the 25. Dave, this homecoming crowd has been, I think, sort of eerily quiet here, maybe waiting for something bad to happen. Now something good has happened. This is the time that a team like Michigan State needs to cash in. Everybody in America that watches football knows that that's the case, but it really is critical at this juncture. Bottom of that pile is Courtney Ledyard, the senior strong side linebacker who comes up with the Spartan recovery. Cam Cameron's defense now in a hole. They are backed up to the 25 on the change of possession. First big break of the day goes to Michigan State. Irvin is again the tailback and takes it left tackle for maybe one. Curtis Randall up, helping out Jabbar Robinson on the stop. 
This is a perfect example of what we've got. We've got basically five down linemen where you see the little marks. They're linebackers that stay clean. In other words, it's very difficult to get blockers on them. So the linemen do their job. Jabara Robinson, number 55, the middle linebacker, does his. No gain or very little. Robinson, one of only two seniors on that Indiana defense. They have only five on the entire roster. Irvin went in motion. Bird grills for his tight end. Brad Rinko, sixth catch of the year. Right at or maybe inside the 10, where it'll be first and goal, a 15-yard hookup. Now, if Bill Burke can set up and throw on rhythm, as he did on that play, one, two, three, four, five set throw, there's nothing you can do in zone coverage to prevent completions. When there's accuracy and rhythm, a passing game can be withering and take you right in the end zone. Brad Ranko, they feel, with the best hands of their three tight ends, showed it there, and it is first and goal from the nine. Urban lava room right side out of the tackle for a Michigan State touchdown. And touchdowns this year, not quite so commonplace for Cedric Irvin. That's just his third of 1998. This scoring output way down this year. Edinger adds the extra point, and it is 10 nothing Spartans. Urban last year, nine rushing touchdowns. Well over 1,200 yards, well below that pace so far this year, but that one felt good. Third and 10 for Burke. Steps up against the blitz, cannot get away, and there is a late marker down. Sherrod Wallace coming from the left side. And joined by Aaron Williams. Steve Newman will tack on holding Michigan State. Holding Michigan State. Yeah, this is a really good call by the Indiana defensive coach John Haycock it's a corner blitz it was not picked up Burke did not see it simultaneously one of the guys up front here there's John Haycock hadn't slept in 48 hours had a baby daughter this week I believe about Wednesday is that right Adeline May Adeline May 11 30 a.m. Thursday wife Tresha and Adeline May back uh, home now doing fine seven pounds 14 ounces our congratulations there was a holding call on number 57, Paul Harker. The, the, again, the freshman left guard. I question the wisdom of not accepting that. That would have knocked him out of field goal range. Edinger's going to try another 47-yarder. He made the first one into the wind. This time he's got the wind behind him and sails that one through even easier. 13. Those two, his longest of the year. 13 to nothing. Michigan State with the Urban touchdown, but a big edge from Edinger, Jarrett, and their overall kicking game. The kicking game is one of the least understood aspects of football. Where you start drives has such an impact on whether or not you score points. Every time Jarrett kicks the ball, they gain yardage and they get to start their drives in a better spot than the Indiana team. And when they get down close, Edinger's converting. I think that uh, Cam Cameron should have accepted that holding call, knock him out of field goal range, and see if he couldn't stop him. Edinger's another one that's been hobbled all week. He didn't kick last week, had a bruised ankle and a thigh pull, and most of this week they listed him as questionable. They had to go with a walk on David Schaefer last week. Boy, no problem with Edinger's ankle this week. No, and his first field goal was into the win. It's not a real stiff win, but it is somewhat a win here in the Midwest. That means something. The last one with it, and now he's just knocking the cover off the ball. David Schaefer, the walk-on last week, had a 38-yarder against Central Michigan. The press invited him to uh, the interview room afterwards, 
and he took a wrong term, couldn't find the interview room, <laughs> didn't see anybody in the room he did find, and he headed home. He, he missed his big spot at the, at least regional attention. Well, when he lost the interview room, he probably bumped into the lineman who'd never had a You want to ask them. Ask me. Hoosiers from the 20 after the touchback. Randall L. will keep and get cut down. Late pitch. Looked like it might have been forward, but this time no flags, which the Spartans can't believe. Nick Saban with arms outstretched saying, how was that not forward? Oh, I think they uh, got one that time. I think Nick's exactly right from where I sit. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's the trouble with those jumbotrons. <laughs> what you're hearing is the crowd seeing that it was indeed a forward pitch. Oh, not even That's close. That's a missed call. I'll tell you what, these guys from the Big Ten don't miss many, but they certainly miss that one. So they give Frankie Franklin the game to the 35-yard line, almost the 36, and a first down for Indiana. Franklin up the middle into the arms of Courtney Ledger. Franklin getting a lot of first half activity this week is played behind Dwayne Hogan and Marcus Floyd all year. We have not seen Hogan last week nor so far this week as it's been Floyd and Franklin handling tailback. Yeah and Floyd having put the ball on the ground we're not likely to see him again today. I think Cam's really gotten tired of the turnover thing with a couple of his players. Seven yards that time. No problem on this pitch for Franklin, except for the fact that he's short of the first down. Franklin. And did he cough it up at the end? He did, and this is a Michigan State recovery by Ronaldo Hill. Number 15, Ronaldo Hill, who is the field corner, meaning he goes to the wide side, made a beautiful play, beat the blocker, LeBron Williams, and one of the problems of a young player like Williams is that he doesn't block well. So now Floyd and Franklin each have a fumble. That's right. Now here Ronaldo clearly beats the blocker, Williams, makes the big hit, the ball comes out. I would argue that that may have been caused by the ground, but the officials called it a fumble. They were on the spot. Looked like the uh, Astro Turf was the only reason for that fumble. And this carry by the freshman Sean Foster, who has given them a needed injection of speed. Seven carries last week, 104 yards, including a 79-yard touchdown. They feel like Sean, Sean has a burst that maybe their other backs do not. And that sort of thing is a good change of pace. If you're a linebacker and you're accustomed to a certain kind of back, like Cedric Urban, and suddenly a scat back comes in, it's tough to hem him up. He is back out, Urban, on the fake. Burke wide open is Burris, and Plaxico steps out inside the corner. Plaxico Burris, 6'6", 224. They have called him Randy Moss Jr. around here. That's good for 25 yards. Such a gifted, large athlete, but also, in the words of Gary Tranquil, this guy is tough. Coming off the ball, adjusting his route, looking inside. Easy. It looks so easy because of his stride. It reminds me of Herman Moore. The great player with Detroit now, who formerly played at the University of Virginia. Not bad comparisons. Moss, Moore, Urban gets outside. There's the cutback, and Cedric Urban is near first and goal. Spartans at the nine. Look inside the ten. Great job by number 79, Jason Strayhorn, the offensive first center goal. for the Spartans. You know, those guys are critical, Dave, those offensive centers. Yep. Have to get my commercial in for today. Do know that. Big guys right there with the football. It's not hard to find Big Jason. 6'2", 296. Gets right in the middle of his man, contains him, keeps his hands in. This is vintage Cedric Irvin. When he cuts back, he normally makes people miss. First and goal, McFadden. Here's the lone setback this time as they go two tight ends, and Leroy charges up the middle. Tried to keep the legs driving a bit, but it ends at about the seven in the arms of Brad Gasino. That's right, number 28. 
big Leroy runs straight up and down and he's six foot two. So McFadden is quite a target. Linebackers love to be the second guy in and nail those six two guys and they're stood up. So Coach Tranquil's working to get his pads down. Have him run a little lower. From the seven, second and goal for Burt. Looking in zone. Down though at the 18 by Gregory, who is enjoying his own Lansing homecoming. The pick Damien played well a week ago against Wisconsin. I thought he was the best defensive lineman along with Agunlia. They need to make him think that he's in Lansing every week. One of Burke's big problems in football, even when he has good protection, and this is not great, but it's good enough. He gets zeroed in on one receiver, doesn't go to his secondary receiver, and doesn't get rid of the ball, but rather takes big sacks, which is exactly what happened on that play. This costs him eight yards. Third and goal from the 15. Burris with the catch, and they will mark him out at the five, where it'll be fourth down. Fans say go for it. They're going to get Edinger instead. One thing I'd really like to see Big Burris do is explode off the ball more. He eases off the ball, and that's good enough to make a lot of plays, but he could do even better if he exploded every single time as he leaves the line of scrimmage. So Edinger will try this time a 22-yarder with a pretty tough angle. But again, no problem, and he is three for three, and Michigan State takes advantage of the chance to go up by 16 with 8.23 to go in the first half. Spartans get points off another Indiana turnover to lead 16 to nothing. We both expected uh, a really evenly matched game, but the kicking advantage of Michigan State and the turnovers of Indiana so far have prevented that. Yeah, almost any fan could say, well, how'd that game go? And any other fan could say, well, turnovers and kicking usually determines it. Well, that's what's happened in the first half. They might finally get one to return, and it is Graham from the goal line. And a return of about 27 yards for Darren Graham as we check in with Dave Ryan. All right, Dave, thanks a lot. Very special guest joins us here on the Michigan State sidelines. Tom Izzo, head basketball coach of the Spartans. We understand you have a very close relationship with Nick Saban in the football program. Tom, how'd that all get started? Well, Nick and I came here as assistants together back in 83, 84, and we've kind of remained good friends when he left and came back. Our wives are good friends, and in this profession, you got to kind of find guys that know what you're going through, and Nick knows what I go through. I know what he does. 22 wins last year, co-Big Ten champs for the first time in eight years. Mateen Cleaves had a tremendous season. Tell us about the upcoming year. We're expecting more great things from you. Well, we hope so. You know, we have all our players back, and so it's a team that has a lot of experience and a lot of depth. It's just going to come down to whether we keep our heads focused on the direction we should be focused on and, and see what we do. Tom, thanks so much. Best of luck to you. Thanks, Dave. You guys, back upstairs, there's Tom Izzo, Michigan State basketball coach. And there's a little of the Randall L. Magic that time as he keeps it for the first down pickup to the 40. Lightning in a bottle, quickly out of the bottle, exploding <laughs> again, clearly the fastest man on the field. Wisconsin had the approach. We're going to try to make him play in a handball court. Frustrating, contain him. Very difficult to do. So far, Michigan State's done a good job, too. Seven carries now, 43 yards for Randall L. Short toss off the play fake. And a lot of room up the side for Lebron Williams. Back healthy again, Lebron Williams, welcome back to the Indiana offense, all the way to the 16-yard line, 45 yards. But you know something, Dave, my knee hurt on every stride <laughs> watching Lebron run. He's out there playing at about 75, 80%, just a little slip screen here, put the ball away. Excellent vision, superb athletic ability, obviously not at full speed. Playing in some pain, but out there for his buddies. The doctors cleared him, and he got him in scoring position. Now, Indiana needs to capitalize here. Very important. 
Tyrone Browning in motion. Randall Elk, quarterback draw to the 10. Gain of about six yards. He's fun to watch even when he stumbles. He just lights the place up every time he touches the ball, which is every play. You know, you find yourself almost disappointed when he hands it off. <laughs> it's so much yeah, fun to watch. Not quite as entertaining when that happens. Randall L. and AstroTurf. Deadly combination. Although he didn't play on AstroTurf. At Indiana, where they've got grass reestablished this year. Seems to enjoy it here, though. On the pitch, juggled. Frankie Franklin hangs on this time, but loses big. A rather upset Antoine Randall has to use a timeout. With 5.59 to go in the second quarter, trying to get Cameron's Hoosiers on the board for the first time in East Lansing. Quarter for the Hoosiers trailing 16 to nothing. In range on the 15 yard line, but looking at third and nine. Yep, and the last play, Indiana did something they've tried two or three times today, which is to line up in an unbalanced formation. They've got an unbalanced in this direction. This is the short side. There's no one else out here into the boundary. Then when they come with the play, they're attempting to run the option into the boundary. Michigan State is expecting it and shut it down. So we end up with a third and nine, and this is the first really big play for Indiana today. Well, they haven't been turned away yet this year in the red zone. A good percentage of touchdowns, too. Eight out of 11. Randall L. so far has accounted for 123 of the 176 total yards for Indiana. That's 70% of their output so far. And it's unbalanced again. Short side, Randall L. Not nearly enough. Cut down at the 14 after a pickup of one. Lamar Marshall up quickly from free safety, where he replaces their leading tackler, the injured Sori Canoe, this week. And the latest to limp for the Spartans. Boy, they are losing them left and right. This is Richard Newsom, who is starting where Marshall normally starts at boundary corner. Marshall having to move over to safety for Canoe. And Nick said, if we lose any of these guys, I'm not real sure who's going in next. That could be a real difficult scenario. They will have to settle, they hope, for a 31-yard Andy Payne field goal. Steve Newman giving time for Newsom to limp to the sideline. Sophomore from Fostoria, Ohio, is going to get checked. Andy Payne has not missed a kick this year. Seven of seven field goals, including a career best of 49 and 17 of 17 PAT. And on the last play, Indiana lined up in that unbalanced again and tried the same option into the boundary that had failed the play before, and it failed again. I don't think that was the best call that could have been made. Jay Rogers, last year's starter at quarterback for hold. 31 yarder by Payne keeps him perfect. And more importantly, gets Cameron and the Indiana offense on the board at last. Boy, if they're a Cherry Bowl veteran, you know they're old timers. Their class is 62. They're going to back to homecoming. We're at 16 3 with 11.49 to go in the third quarter. And the Spartans take over after another short punt at their third. Burke under throwing, Herb Hager. <laughs> we figured that there would be about a 10 yard difference in each exchange of punts, and Bill, it's been a lot more than that. Yeah, we missed it by a factor of 100%. Look at the difference here. The average punts, 30.2 yards for Hagen, 51 yards for Jarrett. Folks, that is two first downs. The net average is roughly the same. Two first downs per punt exchange. That's a lot of field position. That's called hidden yard. Urban cutting back toward the middle, almost ran into his own blocker. Reaches the 34. Over the course of a game, that's going to come close to amounting to the whole length of the field. Yeah, if you have a lot of punts in a game and have a lot of exchanges, and your punter is able to gain essentially a first down for you each time, 
over the period of a, of a half, you will get a tremendous amount of field position, which puts you in a position to score. He's down there getting better on the sideline. How about that? Plus, he's from the state of Indiana to add insult to injury. Yeah, about 20 miles from the IU campus at Martinsville. Burke backing up. Gregory with his third sack of the day. Speaking of prizes that got away, the Lansing product, Damian Gregory, has lived in the Michigan State backfield. Big Damian is a load. He took on those big guys at Wisconsin last week, played them to a standstill, and is doing more of the same today. I'm sure his folks and all his cousins are happy to See number 75 getting after the quarterback. Look at him. He's in shape now. He may not have he may not have been in shape at the beginning of the season, but he's ready now. Oh, a rare off effort by Jarrett returned by Darren Gray in the midfield almost. That one's only 40 and a net of only 32. Very much out of character for the nation's second leading punter. And Indiana set up with some of their best field position of the day at the 48. We haven't called Adewale Ogunlia's name very often today, but maybe it's because his uh, mate Gregory's beating him to the punch every time. Well, he's certainly a factor in every game. You've got to put a blocker plus on him. Maybe a chip block, meaning a back coming out of the backfield takes a little shot at him. You can't just leave one-on-one -on, -one on Ogunlia. And now, if Gregory begins to play as well as he's played today, that'll make him a much better team up front. Hoosiers go three wide outs and play action for Antoine Randallero. And wide open at the 34 is where the catch is made by Tyrone Browning. Maybe the best pass of the day by Randallero. Yeah, that's the first time he's looked to me like he looked in the first few games. The ball just jumped off his hand. It was perfectly thrown. The timing was good. He threw it on the break. And his man, Browning, was right there. Not a real fast receiver, but gifted in his route running. Coach T.J. Wiest, the receiver coach. A lot of hours with those youngsters. Browning eighth in the country this week and reception yards per game about 120 on average. This is Chris Gall, the fullback, slanting for a couple. They call him their unsung hero, running, catching, blocking, senior from River Forest, Illinois. Well, he's going to finish this season not so unsung because people like us are going to see him and sing his praises. He is a fine football player. And that little G handoff to him is the companion play to the option that has failed so often to the open side of their formation. Gauls made good yards on that play several times. Randall the other way this time cuts back, but for limited gains to the 30, or about four this time. Newkirk looking hale and hearty with another tackle. Newkirk's had a big day. We mentioned Gregory on the other side of the ball, but very important for Michigan State is the fact that they're secondary, they're back seven people, where there have been so many injuries and there are so many new faces, has held up well against the speed and the versatility of this Indiana offense. So far, you've got to give them an A+. Plus. Big third and six, Indiana needing to take advantage of great field position. Randall L. throwing the ball off the bat foot, and with the second effort, he is very close to the first down. He dove right at the marker. Josh Thornhill had him wrapped up, but from the looks of that, he might have it up and does for the first down. Josh Thornhill comes from a very strong Michigan State tradition. This is great work by the quarterback, great work by the fullback. The blocking was very poor. He had a, a rusher in his face. He got rid of the ball. It was thrown to the outside shoulder. The first down with Thornhill making the play. Number 50, the backup middle linebacker who has replaced Mike Austin today. His dad, Charlie, a member of the 65-66 championship team. One of those a national champion. Franklin on the option. And Thornhill combining with Lamar Marshall to knock him out of the 15. It's a long list on that Michigan State injury report. Austin, Campbell, Canoe, 
Underwood all out before this day even began and they have been joined now by T.J. Turner who has after starting today injured a knee. Yeah, and I have to say, I have to concede, they ran that boundary option again, and this time they made 10 yards, Dave. I have to admit it. It actually worked. Got it out of the 14. Gall will nose his way near the 11, and let's check in with Dave Ryan. Bandaged as well. Well, guys, we know Michigan State certainly is the walking wounded. Maybe we can call them the walking bandage as well. Lamar Marshall is playing with what's called a Bennett's fracture. It's a fracture dislocation with torn ligaments in his thumb suffered on practice Wednesday. Now, he's wearing a fiberglass soft cast today with a foam cover to limit movement in the thumb. Guys will have surgery on Tuesday, inserting two pins there, and we'll be back when the team plays Minnesota in two weeks. Great modern medicine. The Spartans need it. Randall option left. Franklin with a pitch and an open field in front of him. Touchdown, Indiana. And just as soon as I began to give out A-pluses for, for secondary play and for force and fill on the option responsibility football, Indiana just takes it right in the end zone. Option right to the open side, option left to the tight end side, perfectly executed. Well done by the Indiana offense. Frankie Franklin's second touchdown of the year. Putting them an Andy Payne PAT away from Braylon the Spartans by only six. Payne has not missed a PAT yet. 18 for 18. Franklin, who missed practice time last week because he had to attend the funeral of his grandmother, didn't get much action against Wisconsin, but he is today, and he is taking full advantage. side for Browning and pretty good coverage was Eric Morris it'll be second down yeah you just have to take your hat off to Eric Morris he got a little deceived on the option on the touchdown situation because he was in man coverage that's the toughest thing a defensive back has to deal with but in man coverage on that play he had perfect position just like a seasoned corner he had that wide receiver on his outside hip and he couldn't have gotten to the football had it been thrown just right and the roll with a toss for Franklin. No chance to cut that one back. Ronaldo Hill had that one completely sniffed out. Biggest play of the day for Indiana. Only two of eight on third downs. They need 12. Randall L just got it off. Ball with the catch and a block. Chris Gall is inside the 10 at his first and goal. 25 yards on a near sack of Randall L. Yeah, and a great block by Tyrone Browning, number 23, down the field. I'll tell you what, I love this Chris Gall. Not just because he's a walk-on who came out here to play because he loves to play. Good pressure there by Eric Morris, but he's well blocked by Snyder, the guard, number 65. Now, boom, right there. Good job by Browning. Number 23 getting the block on number 29, Marshall. First and goal from the sixth. Goal will get that one down to about the two. Spartan Stadium has gone from kind of a stunned silence to some noise now, but it's a somewhat panicked noise from this sellout. They can't believe what they're seeing. Well, I'm afraid maybe they can believe it. And I've, I have felt like, Dave, they've been sort of sitting on pins and needles all day waiting for this. Unfortunately, it seems that the players have too. And when you expect something that it might happen, very often you cause it to happen. And their third quarter collapse, that tendency is continuing right here. From the two, Gall gets the call again. And touchdown, Indiana. They have tied it up. Chris Gall. 
Good job by number 88, Sterling Mincer, the tight end, who has stepped in to start in an injury situation. He knocks his man back, so does everybody else, and Gall just walks in the end zone, and it's deja vu all over again, as Yogi Berra would say, of what Nick's going through down there, Coach Saban. Andy Payne to give the Hoosiers the lead, and there are flags and whistles, and uh, Bill Rogers trying to roll out after a bad snap. State led 16 nothing. They've surrendered 16 unanswered points. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. We'll do the try again. Everything that can go well or go right for Indiana is going that way right now. <laughs> they just had a bad snap. The ball went on the ground, but they were moving, so there's no play. They get to line up and kick it again. James Broyles, number 66, is the long snapper. He's the starting left guard. He's got to do his job. He's got to hit that holder right in the hands. Jay Rogers is the holder. Perfectly executed this time. And they go up. 17 to 16. Michigan State, 16. Cameron's an old basketball guy. He knows about runs, and Indiana is on one. Eight play drive. Finished off by Gall appropriately enough because he's the main reason they got down there. And remember this field position is so, so important. They only had to go 60 yards to get that because of the low punt, the nice kick return by Graham, and then a 60 yard drive in the end zone. Your chances of scoring from 60 yards away are enormously higher than from 80 yards away if you start on your own 20. And as of now in the third quarter, Michigan State has seven first downs. I'm sorry. Indiana has seven first downs. Michigan State one. Third quarter miseries for Michigan State. 44-14 this year. They've been outscored in the third. And from 16, nothing ahead. Does that sound familiar? When we were here for their opener against Colorado State, they had that lead at one point, and the Rams came back to the 23-16 win. 117 to go in the third quarter. Indiana nosing out in front. Andy Payne's last kick. Went out of bounds. This one will be returned from the five by Haygood. <laughs> Yardage at the half was pretty close. Michigan State had just a 10 yard advantage. What about a 12 yard advantage and in the second half. Mercy 125 for Indiana two for the Spartans. Well, I think the Indiana team. I don't think I know is making a statement to their coaching staff to each other. The thing that Cam said by golly we're, we're just going to pour it on here. We're not going to accept anything other than that. They're getting it done. The Michigan State leadership meaning the players on the field have not responded in like fashion. Durban. Chased out, might have gotten one, might have also been hit late. Fans over there and back of the Indiana bench look for a flag and they got one. Yeah, the one thing you don't want to do now if you're Indiana is to ignite Michigan State, get them all upset by hitting their best player out of bounds and giving them 15 yards plus some anger to feed on. The foul was committed by number 99, Aaron Williams, defensive end, just a little over aggressive. You got to know where that sideline is. And there it is, personal foul, personal Hoosiers. Foul, Indiana. No, actually, that's 27 Smith. That's Justin Smith that did that. Black Williams finally came. Yeah. Williams was legal. Smith was not. Smith was the guy that hit him after he was out of bounds a couple of steps. Justin Smith has played the rave reviews, a redshirt freshman from Indianapolis. Starter at strong safety. 
moves him up to the 39 for first down. And Burke. One to go deep, way overthrowing Plaxico Burris, even at 6-6. Not easy to do. It's got an atmospheric update on that Michigan State sideline from Dave Ryan. Yeah, guys, just an observation. The offensive line of Indiana so very confident on that last touchdown run by Chris Gall, exploding off the ball. The defensive line seemed really tired, guys. At the end of that drive, it looked like they lacked that desire to get a good push upfield. Now, a moment ago, I observed them on the bench as Todd Grant and the D-line coach is working with them. Very solemn, very quiet, guys, down here. Almost like they're expecting is good Indiana second half. That's what they're getting so far. Irvin high steps out of one tackle. First down across midfield for Cedric Irvin. Cedric Irvin. Never forget the sight in the opener of Cedric imploring his teammates on the bench to get into it, to get as excited about things as he was. And that day, at least, he was not successful. No, and we looked into those eyes of those players, and we saw Brook Trout stares, and that's not what you want to see. Yes, Cedric is a marvelous leader. He plays his heart out, but he's not going to be able to do this alone. He got some good blocking that time from Harker and Secura, but they're going to have to pick it up as a football team, everybody. Burke will settle for the tight end, Baker Short. About three yards for Chris Baker, a redshirt freshman. Caught only two passes all year coming in. That's his second today. And might bring it into the third quarter. Nick Saban reliving. The same problem in another third quarter, which has ended with his Spartans trailing for the first time today. They led 16 to nothing when things started to go awry. And an impressive late third period drive headlined by Chris Gall, who finished it off. Got Indiana on top as we head to the fourth in East Lansing. Lansing, Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, and Dave Ryan in a 17-16 Indiana lead with the Spartans on the Hoosier 45, looking at second down and five. Best weapon all day has been the usual Cedric Irvin, who reaches the 42, where it'll be third and about two. One of the things that is characteristic of the Indiana style of defense, they've adopted the Bears defense, so named because Buddy Ryan made it popular. It's just a double eagle where you cover both guards and the center, have five down linemen. It's tough to run on because they keep the linebackers clean. There's a man for each of your blockers up front to keep them off the linebackers, and they should be able to make plays and keep the running game from being consistent. In motion, Irvin out wide to the right side this time on third down, thrown the other way, and it's a completion, fumble out of bounds after the catch by Haygood. But he had enough for the first for the Spartans at the 37. Coach Nick Saban, we said, is reliving the horror of the third quarter thing, we'll call it, that's haunted him here at Michigan State. And then when tra trailing at the end of three quarters, it doesn't look good. One and 15. So right now he's hoping they can break that pattern and make it two and 15 with a comeback here against this tough Indiana team. Flip side of that, when they're leading after three, it's just about impossible to catch them. 20, one and one, when that's the case. And they're only down one here. Irvin gets a couple maybe off tackle. You see the theory of the Bear defense and more especially, they're using a kind of a flex off of it where they move one of the linemen back. It's tough to block that guy. It's tough to block the linebackers. And you can't mount a sustained running game. You'll notice Cedric Irvin's averaging just around four yards a carry today. And that's below his average. And that's the whole idea. They go split backs this time. And it's Gary Scott plucking that one out of midair. Inside the 30. He's hit immediately by O.J. Spencer. Nice throw and catch there on the hitch. We can see the way the defense is lined up. One, two, three, four, five defensive linemen. This lineman is back off the ball. That's just barely discernible from this angle. 
And it's not such a good pass rush defense unless you send linebackers. And so that was a good call. Third and short now. Burke rolling the other way. The left-hander fires into traffic. Intercepted by Jabbar Robinson. One of the leading thefts in the country. His fourth of the year. And I'm not sure what Burke thought he saw, but all he should have seen was white jerseys. It's very difficult for a, line, for a, a quarterback on the move to see the entire field. He's looking at a segmented part, just that left flat aspect. So a linebacker coming inside out has a chance to pick one like that if he has the athletic ability. And certainly Jabbar Robinson has demonstrated that he has that. And they have stifled another drive by Michigan State. Four picks by the middle linebacker. He was already in the top five nationally. Before this game, they turn it over at the 31 yard line. Short gain, Chris Gall. One more look. Yeah, Robinson right here. Really, really nice athletic ability. He's on the run. He's mirroring the quarterback, which is his job as a middle linebacker. If the quarterback were to turn it up, he would turn it up to meet him. He times his break on the ball perfectly and looks it in. Looks like a polished receiver. Thank you, Franklin. Third and three. Urging on the Spartan defense, but Randall L. will keep and have the first down at the 44. Keeps it going. And Randall L's confidence is growing with each drive, Dave. I mean, you can just see his body language. You remember how he started the game a week ago? And then he wasn't quite as quick. He wasn't quite as assured. He loves to run this option. He's not one of those quarterbacks that hates to hear the option call come into the game. He likes to run it. He likes to take charge. And that's what he's doing. Very close to what would be his second 100-yard rushing game of the year. Franklin. Over the middle. Yeah, the problem they had midweek after that Tuesday practice where he was uh, questioning every decision he made. Was that the right one? Was that the right one? They said, make a decision, live with it. That's what he's done today. That's right. He was not questioning the coach's decisions. He was questioning himself. And that's worse with the leader. He would turn and look at Cam and say, is that right? Or Pete Schmidt. And they'd say, look, you make a decision, live with it. Just as you said. And he's doing it now. Live in large. Second and eight. Chased by Smith and Peterson. Throws it back across the middle and incomplete. Boy, Franklin, for a moment, was wide open. But Josh Thornhill recognized that and got over in a hurry. Yeah, Josh Thornhill was right there. Good play by the freshman and a very poor play by the other freshman, Antoine, really knows better than this. He's running hard to his left. And right here, as he gets more experience, he'll know at that place right there, he needs to just get on the ground and take his lumps. He threw it into interception city. He's lucky that thing wasn't plucked. Long count on third down. Randall L. Keeping, look out. Randall L. 20 and finally down near the 10 Lamar Marshall broken thumb at all wrapping him up but not before he had 43 yards and look at the response of the Indiana bench big brother kind of likes that <laughs> number 10 because he wants his little brother to score and that means he doesn't have to go back out there as soon and the score may be different when he does but the growing confidence of Antoine Randall L and the inability of the defense, namely Eric Morris, number nine, perhaps the best tackler on the team, to get him on the ground there results in a very long game. Marshall, the only reason it wasn't 53 and a touchdown. Leading by one already. Gall 
with a couple down to the eight yard line. And another thing that doesn't meet the eye on a drive like this is they're just grinding down the thin ranks of the Michigan State defense. They don't have a lot of people. They are getting tired. Dave Ryan commented on that. He's down there. He senses things. He sees how those guys look in their faces. And it was a very good point. And I think the Michigan State defense is grinding down. And that's the whole idea with running play after option after running play. Tough on the defensive lineman and linebacker. Two tight ends, offset eye, second and eight. Not a very convincing fake. Randall L meant to keep it all the way and does all the way to the end zone for another touchdown. Are you suggesting that you are not faked out on that, David? I agree. Somebody blew the fake, but what was not blown was a block by Chris Gall, number 40, who just continues to be a big factor in this game. He made the key block to get his quarterback into the end zone. Randall L's sixth rushing touchdown of the year. More than he has throwing. And the extra point by Andy Payne is a big one that gives him an eight point pad. 24 16, 24 unanswered points for the Hoosiers. Nine twenty five to go at stunned Spartan Stadium. Randall L and Indiana nursing an eight point lead. Time remaining, though, for a Spartan response. 6.13 to go, and they have all three of their timeouts as they start from their 13. And Burke going to work through the air to Burris. First down, driven out at the 27. Cam Cameron, last October, saw his team shut out three times, scoring a grand total for the month of six points, and they were both on field goals at, at uh, Bloomington against Michigan State in a 38-6 loss. The last October win <laughs> over four years ago at Iowa. But that 15 game streak may end here. Slammed by Burris, another first down to the 45. Really nice work by Burke and Burris. Two consecutive plays, the outcut and the little slant. And what Indiana is going to do, it appears, and wisely so, is they're going to play zone and see if Michigan State has the poise to take it down the field. Again, rhythm passing. One, two, three, four, five, set. Throw, you can't defend that stuff in a zone defense. Good execution. Burt, time to search. And here's his tight end, Baker, to the 15. Until today, not much of a weapon. 40 yards for Chris Baker. And way back in August, Dave, we sat down with the coaches from Michigan State, and they felt like, hey, we got more speed at tight end this year. Chris Baker especially is going to give us a deep threat. And young Chris picked a very good time to live up to his advanced billing. The pump and go is not there. Well covered by the zone. Actually, Baker is well covered. Irvin, unable to get the corner turn this time. Driven out by Justin Smith and Mike McGrath of safeties. They got all kinds of time. They have all their timeouts. And they're at the 12 of Indiana. And Burke, for the second week in a row, has been productive. 259 last week. The big difference is he had four touchdown passes last week. Yeah, he really was anxious to get that play in, get it called, so they don't end up with that, that deadly delay thing with the 25-second clock. Runs it to the end zone. Stretching catch, Gary Scott. And this one is an over by a long shot. A rapid-fire drive by Bill Burke 
to get the Spartans within this two-point try of a tie. Yeah, we bragged on Randall L. all day. That was a Bill Burke production there. Well executed drive, good accuracy, good decision making. Split backs, three step drop. Burke will keep. Did he get there? Yes. The call took forever, but it did come. Two point conversion, Burke. How appropriate. That Bill Burke is the man who guts out the tying points. A career day for the junior out of Warren, Ohio, and Bill Burke has this one tied up. Barely. In the first half, the best weapon the Spartans had was Paul Edinger, who was three for three today, including a season best 47 and a 46 officially and a 22, 21 yarder, the last one. Well, they got some work to do before they're in field goal range. They're third in a mile. Bill Burke's potentially fatal flaw is that he tends to hold the ball in drop back passing situations. Well, that, according to his own third. offensive coordinator, Coach mm -hmm. Tranquil, he did that at the most inopportune time just now. Third and about 20. And they need probably 18 at least to get within Edinger's range. They're coming after him. And he throws it in the area of Irvin. <laughs> the very general area of Irvin. <laughs> oh, I think he got away with one there. Well, he had Robinson right in his face. Fourth and 19. And it will be Jarrett doing the kicking. With 56 seconds, both teams have two timeouts remaining. In that defensive package, if you're willing to risk man coverage, you can get a very sophisticated set of blitzes that are almost impossible to pick up. Jabbar Robinson came clean, forced the bad throw. There, it's already proven he can pin him deep. This is fair caught at the 13 by Graham, 50 seconds for the Indiana offense. Which last time they snapped it featured Jay Rogers at quarterback and not Randall L. That will not change here. Rogers had not thrown a pass this year. Coming into this game, he got sacked on his first snap. But he has had some productive days. Before this year, a couple of 300 yard games, and in fact, an IU record 408 last year against Ball State. So he can't air it out. Frankie Franklin for about three, as they may just be settling for overtime this far in their own end of the field. They are most assuredly doing that. They're out there in two tight ends, running the ball. Michigan State's going to see if they can't force the punt, get a chance to uh, block the punt or run it in and prevent this from going to overtown. So a timeout for the Spartans. They're second. They have one left, 37 seconds. But with only one more timeout and second down coming, just about impossible Barring a disastrous turnover to keep this one from going to overtime. Yep, I would say it is a moot point. We're going to see our first overtime this year for our broadcast crew. And I think that's a, a fitting way to finish this thing up. And looking at Randall L. and looking into his eyes, one thing you have to remind yourself when you get all into these games is that this is a game and we don't mess around with head injuries and we don't put people back on the field when they shouldn't be there. So you can be sure that that's what the um, staff and the doctors are thinking about over there on the Indiana sideline as they should be. Yeah. 
Still two tight ends. Still on the ground on second and eight. Franklin. The Big Ten has had fewer overtime games than any conference. This would be the second. Indiana involved in both. Indiana, Illinois, the only other Big Ten overtime contest. There is, uh, with 32 seconds to go, the last timeout by Michigan State. Time remaining in regulation. And that will get us to the extra period on the sneak by Rodgers. Let's check in with Dave Ryan. Yeah, guys, assuming we have the overtime, Jay Rodgers will be the quarterback for IU. Antoine randall could not remember certain things trainers were asking him here on the Hoosier sideline. They don't want to take any chances. It is a mild concussion. He is done for the day, guys. And a very important thing just happened for Indiana. The backup quarterback came in under pressure, took the snap, handed it off a couple of times, and then kept the ball himself, and nobody put it on the ground. So many times in situations like this, you see a fumble, and the game is won or lost in that instance because of that play. Well, we saw two impressive comebacks today, and Indiana in the second half has trailing 16 to nothing, led by Randall L. Here's what they're giving up. 10 of 16, 147 through the air. 21 for a career high, 134 on the ground. 281 total yards today, and a rushing touchdown for the redshirt freshman from Riverdale, Illinois, but as Dave Ryan reports, his day is done. Here are the overtime rules. They'll toss the coin, and the winner gets to choose offense, defense, or which end of the field they want. Each team gets one possession from the opponent, 25, until a winner is decided. No game clock is involved. And after the second overtime touchdown, this is the wrinkle that they brought in last year with so many going six, seven, eight possessions deep. You have to go for two just to make it a little bit tougher to keep matching seven for seven. You know, sometimes I look at these rules and I think what happens is that the rules committee is sitting in the room too long. <laughs> that deal about going for two in the third overtime, I really don't understand. I don't think that's going to change a whole lot, but I'm sure somebody on the rules committee thought so. I spent six years on that committee and we never got around to two points in the third overtime. What do you think of the concept that unlike the NFL overtime, it's not timed. It's a little bit artificial, some people think. But on the other hand, the flaw that some see in the NFL system is there's no guarantee both teams will have the ball. But it is more like regular football the way they do it. Yeah, I think you can argue for both situations. But the NFL uh, lends itself to a much longer playing time. If you play 24 games in the NFL and you're late in the season, and you're exhausted after four quarters, and you go out and play another entire quarter without a break, I think there's a, a chance for injury. I think this is a better system. I think this is exciting. And it's usually over fairly quick. The toss will have the option of going on offense, defense, or choosing the end of the field from which we'll play. You understand your options. Okay, number 40 is going to call it. That's a head. That's a tail. In the air, please. Let's go ahead. Three, Steve Newman. It's a tail, Green, you've won the toss. You want defense. What goal do you want to defend? Dave, turn that way, please. We head to overtime in East Lansing when we come back. For Dave Barnett with Bill Curry and Dave Ryan. Nick Saban and Cam Cameron have both seen terrific comebacks. It was 16-0 Spartans, 24 straight points by Indiana, engineered by the since departed Antoine Randall And then the eight-point comeback by Bill Burke Spartans to force this extra period. Rodgers can run the option. Not nearly the way Randall all can, but they don't completely take it out of the package when he's in there, and he keeps for a couple. Now, Bill, the decision 
that was just made if you win the toss are you every time just about depending on the weather going to elect defense first hope to hold them to three get your seven and end it right there that's exactly the only thing I would uh, I would uh, correct there you don't want to just hold them to three you want to stop well, at them. worst you, you can three. keep them from scoring right. ideally and then all you got to do is kick a field goal to win but virtually everybody agrees that you play defense first and then see what you got to make Rounding in motion. Rodgers lets it go, and a crowd it is cut. Rounding immediately wrapped up by Ronaldo Hill. That short of the first down, though, at the 15. Every time I look at a play in the Indiana backfield, I see big number 62, Newkirk. He's had a big time game being held right here, but he's in the quarterback's face. He's made big plays all day long. He's the guy that got the good clean hit that caused Randall L to have the concussion. Big game for Newkirk. Third and short here. Well, they give it to Gall. We'll have to wait till they unstack this, and that may take a while. Official timeout. Well, I'll tell you what they're unstacking is another Robert Newkirk play, and he's helping the officials by um, down, motioning that uh, Gall did not make it. How he did it, I do not know, but somehow Chris Gall made this first down. Number 62, boom, just splits first the down, double team. The Great defensive line play, but somehow Gall, with his leg drive, got the nose of the ball over the first down marker. Hoosiers from the 15 with a new series rounding in motion Rodgers to the end zone caught touchdown Indiana Craig Osika the tight end and what a great throw what a great way for Jay Rogers to open his season <laughs> and that's literally the first pass he's thrown he didn't get the first one off that he tried because he was sacked and to just feather that in there to the tight end, what a nice job by Jay Rogers. You have to be happy for that young man. And now Michigan State's <laughs> offense has a challenge to try to match that touchdown. Andy Payne yet to miss a PAT. Rogers the hold. Didn't miss this one. Craig Osika, freshman tight end, Hobart, Indiana. Yep, here's Osika. He's going to just work his way right here behind the linebackers. This is his second catch of the year. And the free safety marshal's trying to play him. First time, first time that he's had a chance to play uh, free safety. And you think Rogers likes this? Osika is a little bit happy. And a somewhat interested observer over here, Randall L, says, gee, what are they doing out there? I like that. Still not sure quite where he is. And Antoine, there are a lot of us who know exactly how you feel. We'll all come together tomorrow morning. Right now, just enjoy this. And uh, I know you'll hope your team can hold on. The Spartans are hoping that they can get in there and tie this thing up. And before Randall L got the job, Rodgers had started 16 consecutive games through the end of last year. One of the more experienced backup quarterbacks really anywhere in the country. Yeah, when you're a backup quarterback, I was talking about this earlier, got interrupted, and you get your chin all down because you're not playing, you're not ready at a time like this. Rodgers obviously didn't make that mistake. So the Spartans with their series. Play action, Burke, look deep, wasting no time for Burris. Caught inbounds. Well, I mean, they didn't waste any time. The only question, did Burris get a foot down in front of the back of the end zone? He did. Both officials back there agreed. Now, Edinger has to hit to tie it. And he does. 31-31, one overtime deep. An easy.
East Lansing. Well, we've raced all the way to the second overtime period, 31-31. Spartans on the attack to begin this OT. And it's Urban. Cedric Urban spinning. Still going. Touchdown. What a run by Cedric Irvin. That featured all his best elements. Great players make big plays at great moments. Leroy McFadden, number 28, great job out front blocking, and you can't run any better than this. All the fears of Cam Cameron realized on that play. And Edinger is good again. Michigan State. Well, I guess you'd say, Dave, it just doesn't get any more exciting than this. Big Ten football in overtime. And Cedric is no longer the only guy who's excited over there. <laughs> yeah, he had, to, he had to be real creative. He did everything, a little of everything, to get his teammates to respond today. But by golly, they have stepped up on both sides of the ball. And this has turned into a slugfest. Well, the AXA Equitable Players of the Game. Indiana's Antoine Randall L, 281 total yards and a touchdown. And Bill Burke for Michigan State, 24 out of 37, a career high 324 yards, two touchdowns for the Spartan QB. Indiana's Randall L done for the day with a concussion. Jay Rogers' turn to try and keep this one tied and send it further into the second OT. Rogers rolling into the end zone. There is a flag, and that one is ruled out of bounds. Now, there was a flag thrown all the way back along the near sideline. That's intended for Browning and Jay Rogers. And Nick Saban is pretty agitated. But it's against Indiana. Ineligible receiver downfield. Ineligible receiver Indiana. penalty against the Hoosiers. Here's what happened. Number five, Lebron Williams stepped up on the football as the widest man. That meant he covered the tight end in a too tight situation. And when the tight end went out for the pass, this man right here, he's lined up too close to the line of scrimmage. So technically, that tight end is a lineman. The penalty's being called right now. Penalty on the offense, almost a touchdown. But it would have been called back anyhow. Five yard penalty. Browning just a step or two out of bounds. Jay Rogers from the football family. His father, Randy Rogers, an assistant coach for John McAvick, both at Illinois and Texas. He was 40 and 2 as the quarterback at Austin Westlake, preceding Drew Brees of Purdue. Nice little quarterback factory they have working there. Rodgers settles short goal with the catch. That's about it at the 28. Rodgers pass complete to goal. It's out of bounds by Richard Newsom. Richard Newsom there to force him out. Bear Smith has turned this from a painful day into a memorable one. He finally got his first sack of the year and battling a bad ankle, which he hurt last week. Yeah, he had good pressure there. Forced the throw a little bit early. And Richard Newsom, number 32, is hung in there. He's had a rough day, but he certainly made a good play on ball right there. Both wides on the near side, second and a long 12, and Rodgers rolling the other way. To the end zone. Closest man, Lebron Williams, at least the closest Hoosier. Back in the days when there were nickel seats, you would have said he threw that in the nickel seats. He threw that in the $5 seats. Now inflation has hit the stands. 
He just threw that away. I bet they're even more than $5. <laughs> Let's get a quick update from Dave Ryan. Yeah, guys, Cedric Gerben, after scoring that touchdown, has been pretty much stationary on one knee, praying. He's not even looking at what's happening on the field. He's relying on his teammates like the Patton and other guys to tell him exactly what's going on. Huge play here. Audible. Play pocket five. They didn't get it in the backfield. Rodgers. no pitch man. Rodgers had to keep it himself, and he got buried at the 27, and here comes the last gasp for Indiana. That was the unbalanced formation to the field with the short side into the boundary, the option that began as, as a poor play but has been very productive going in this direction for Indiana this time. When the audible was attempted, the fans got into the game. Neither back can hear it. You can see Franklin holding up his hands. They don't know what to do. So Rodgers is out there without a pitch back, and there's nothing doing. Timeout on the field. Indiana will use its timeout. Looking at fourth and 12. Each team gets one timeout. Timeouts do not carry over. Had they been accumulated at the end of the game, they disappear when the clock ends the regulation game, and each team gets one. So this is it for Indiana. Cam Cameron trying to end a 15-game October losing streak dating back four years and two days. Looked like they had it ended. They led 24-16 after trailing 16 to nothing. Burke led. The Spartans on a lightning quick touchdown drive scored the two point vert conversion himself, which forced the overtime in the second OT period. This is it for Indiana. Fourth and 12, they have got to get to the Spartans 50. But whatever happens here, Nick Saban needed some support from his team leaders, and he has gotten it today in this second half as they have battled back. For Indiana. And they are one play from a very big win. Rodgers over the middle, incomplete. What a crushing hit against Tyrone Browning to end it for Michigan State. Lamar Marshall, number 29, made a great break on the ball and made sure he did his job as the two deep safety to secure this victory. Coach Saban can hang his hat on this one. This was tough. Hard fought. Big win. Saturday, October 31st. Time to be announced. Real good call here. Four verticals right down the field. This is a catch without the intrusion of Marshall. Browning down the field, bending slightly inside. The ball is thrown at an 18-yard depth just behind the linebackers at the perfect location. And Nick can finally breathe for the first time today. <laughs> Tough day for Cam Cameron. Wonderful day for Nick Saban. And he can build on this. And by the way, Cam Cameron can also build on it because his team continues to come close in tough games, continues to fight hard, and that's what you build upon. They can now say they are three plays away from being unbeaten. They were two plays from 4-0 coming into this one. And that's a whole lot better than getting blown out. Yeah. But Michigan State wins it in the second overtime, 38-31 for Bill Curry, Dave Ryan, and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Dave Barnett saying so long, long from East Lansing. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.